So welcome to the first edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with, and today we're with Dr. Jason Psycho. Um, so Jason, to get us started here, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Currently, I'm an instructional technology consultant for Wayne Risa, which is a regional educational service agency in the Metro Detroit region. Uh, before that, I was a science teacher for thir 13 years, and after getting my PhD in instructional technology, I held academic appointments as a professor of educational technology in several teacher preparation programs. Uh, my research has followed on K-12 online learning, primarily dealing with K-12 student online readiness, but also teacher preparation and building capacity for online learning. And as a side note, I hold a degree in foresight and have done futurist consulting work over the past decade here and there. Cool. And for those that are unaware, Jason was actually my first doctoral student at, uh, when I was at Wayne State University. So um, glad to have you here today. So you mentioned about getting capacity going and, and working with teachers. So knowing that we've got a lot of teachers that are being thrown into this, many of them that may not have any experience with online learning at all, um, what sort of advice or guidance would you have for them? Well, I think there's several short-term and long-term considerations for teachers, administrators, and policymakers. I think for the teachers, while I don't fully subscribe to Maslow's hierarchy, I think the, the key thing here for everybody to understand is that we should pay attention to the basic needs of both ourselves and our students and probably the parents too during this time. But, you know, first and foremost, communication is probably the most key element of all this. Have multiple methods of communication available. Emails is the obvious choice, but, and, and so is video conferencing if you have access to it as well as your students. But even, you know, consider good old fashioned phone conversations and texting as well. And, and from a, you know, a standpoint of if you're working from home remotely and not comfortable giving out your phone number, you know, you can do things like set up a Skype telephone number or something in Google Voice or even use a mass text texting service like Remind. Um, you know, in terms of content right now, you know, it's the basics. It's the bare minimum. It's the stripped down curriculum. Uh, many states have given guidance that there should be no new instruction or nothing can be graded. So just have focused materials that provide students with uh, either enrichment or review based on what's already been covered and or areas that you know your students struggled on throughout the year. And then lastly, for you know, administrators and policymakers, play the long game here. I, I think a lot of people think of this as gonna end quickly. Pandemics generally last 12 to 18 months and have different phases. So let's you know, set aside all the, you know, the stuff we've been through in the next couple months or will go through in the next couple months, but think about the fall. What policy decisions, you know, what types of teacher training, what types of general awareness with online learning and, and remote learning and blended learning need to take place at both the local and the state level before the start of the 2021 school year? You know, what equity and access issues can you try to solve between now and then in the fall? And as somebody with a, you know, a background in both, you know, science, and, you know, I was a biology teacher as well as strategic foresight, I cannot stress this enough. I think we're focusing well, maybe a little too much on the present need to kind of start thinking about the long haul here because we're in this for a while. Now, you mentioned in your introduction about uh, your focus upon student readiness. We've got at the same time a lot of parents that now have their, their children at home and, you know, they're now responsible for sort of overseeing their learning as they're trying to, to get through this. So uh, what kind of advice would you have for a, a parent who now has got one or more children sitting in the, the house that, you know, are supposed to be learning or learning online at this stage? Well, again, you know, similar to the teachers, you know, learning should be probably secondary to all the important things. Make sure your kids are, are fed, healthy, well-rested, comfortable from a mental standpoint, you know, there's a lot going on here that they've never seen before. You know, the world's been flipped upside down. So, you know, when you say that, it may, things like learning, uh, learning objectives kind of fall by the wayside. But again, circling back to, uh, you know, the idea that parents are going to be tasked with monitoring student learning. Uh, you know, if your technical skills aren't that strong, try to reach out to people, friends, family to help. Uh, you know, one of the big barriers to uh, online learning in, an, in the normal situation is having technical difficulties and then feeling isolated because you can't access the material or can't get in touch with uh, your, your instructor. So, you know, making sure that those things are taken care of from the technical standpoint, uh, someone around to help you with the trouble spots. But then uh, the other thing is, you know, right now, if you look at social media and the web and school district websites, a lot of people are throwing the kitchen sink at, at, at everybody in social media with respect to things 
like resources. Here's a reading guide. Here's 20 things you can do and so on and so forth. Uh, too much, too much in my opinion. And so maybe something that you could do or parents could do is just maybe have a quick conversation, a quick chat with your teacher, your, your um, I'm sorry, your son or daughter's teacher, and just maybe ask them, hey, are there one or two things that they can work on or focus on? You know, at the elementary level, there might be a little more holistic viewpoint from the teacher. You know, this student may you know, need a little more help in social studies or this particular topic in mathematics, whereas some might need help in other areas. And, and that would provide some focus for uh, parents to steer their t uh, students to look in those directions for help and, and work to do during this time. Cool. Well, thank you very much, Jason. So this has been our first five minutes on K-12 online learning with, in this case, Dr. Jason Psycho.